For our best music coach, my name is Dan, and you are watching a music teacher's reaction live and in real time to the Outer Wilds original soundtrack. Now, I've never heard this before in my life, not once ever, ever, ever. I have no notes, no preparation. I have no idea what is about to happen other than we're going to listen to this music, and I'm going to do it for the first time here. So anything I talk about is going to be off the top of my head. Nothing is prepared ahead of time. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. Without any waiting, we're going to going to jump straight into Timber Hearth. Oh, it's so pretty already. <laughs> hey, chat, how's it going? Hey, Razman. Wow. We've had acoustic guitar, now we have banjo in the left ear. Again, steel string acoustic in the right ear. Oh, this is awesome. Plus it sounds like all like live instruments too. Oh, this is so pretty. So much going on. Oh, and slide coming in there. Wow, so this is unlike anything we have heard before on this channel in terms of video game music that is coming from, again, with the name Timber Hearth, the use of the acoustic instruments, the use of the live electric instruments, it sounded to me like everything, perhaps with the exception of the bass and maybe some light synths in the back, which maybe were not there, that might have just been some reverb, was all live instruments really really interesting so far i cannot wait to check out this next piece this next one is called outer wilds all right so we're actually already starting to see some patterns here so something we want to look out for Love it. 
Okay, we're gonna listen for bass lines changing underneath repeated patterns up top. So you can hear the bass. You hear that? How that banjo part is staying the same, but the bass notes are changing underneath it. Those really low notes. Oh yeah, come on. Sounds like harmonica in the right ear now. Maybe it's a violin. Okay, so that's actually two songs in a row we've heard on one thing. So there's something I want to point out to you guys that I have a feeling based on the fact that it showed up in these two songs already, we might hear it again just based off the vibe too of these two songs. So look out for when we have... Like that, those types of line things happening over a bass line... or whatever it was look out for those things where we have bass line notes changing and there's a melody line on top of it this next one is called museum
Okay, so a couple of interesting things here. First of all, we heard little tastes of the first two songs coming in here. This is also the first time I think we've heard more. And again, it might not be synthesizers. It might be actual acoustic and electronic instruments. Well, uh, electric amplified instruments um, being played and then playing with the samples of that. This is the first time that we had this sort of atmospheric thing going on. Another interesting thing, too, is that we had this sound in here. We actually had the raised fourth. So Timber Hearth was in that key of E-flat, at least for a little while. And this song also started off in the key of E-flat. But what was different is that this, the museum, actually brought in B natural notes instead of B flat notes to give us this sort of Lydian feeling of, well, maybe we're not actually in E-flat. Maybe we're secretly in B-flat the whole time. And we're just hanging out on, oh, excuse me, not B-flat. Excuse me. We had the A natural Let's try that one again. We had the A natural that because four of E flat. Anyway, right, I misspoke. So we had the A natural of E flat, which means maybe we've been in B flat the whole time because we actually had that Lydian sound on the E flat. Okay, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Yeah, twist of key signature, or maybe it's like, maybe we'd, we've been in A-flat the whole time. Now you can hear that banjo. That banjo is doing something very similar to what we heard in Outer Wilds. So here, you can actually hear the banjos playing that bass line a little bit. Also, the percussion's very interesting as well. Oh, yes, there we go. Piano. There's that bass line. I wonder if we're gonna hear it go to the F sharp. Okay, so it's actually following a similar pattern to Timber Hearth. Because we had this sort of metric modulation, this almost different feeling happen halfway through Timber Hearth with the electric guitar coming in. And now we have reversed sounds. Shout out to Puffle Chops for an incredible handle. So now we have these electronic moments where changing it, we actually had a couple synths come in. So 
based on what we've heard so far, we're also going to look out for these keys as well. The key of A major, essentially, and the key of possibly A flat major, maybe it's really E flat major. And we're also gonna look out for this, this idea to come through again. So here's what's pretty cool is that, remember what I talked about a couple songs ago about having these bass lines with these melodies happening over it? We could actually in this song hear the banjo doing that by itself. So it was changing the lowest note that it was playing in its little line. So it was going, and then it was going. So you hear the, the, those three notes, the top two notes are going to be the same every time. But listen, the bottom note changes. Now bottom note changes. And that's actually very similar to a bass line movement. I think, think we might have actually just had this same exact bass line movement in Outer Wilds. Because Outer Wilds is going... Now it's also interesting, and I wanna, I'm want i going to bring this up. In it, it's... Uh, the reason why these tracks feel like there's this thing that they always want to keep moving forward and they never sort of find their home is because a lot of the times the composer is not going to one. The composer is not going to the tonic. So uh, when we talk about the musical alphabet, we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then after G, we go back to A. So there's no H. So we go A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G over and over again. Now what we can do is we can assign letters to those numbers. So let's say a is one so we go a b c d so d is four so we don't actually hear an a major chord but we hear four we hear the four emphasized over and over again and it's almost like that the four is the world that we're living in and there's no real resolution musically speaking uh, which is very uh, a very interesting thing to do. Sort of reminds you of a sort of C418 style. If you think about uh, the composition Sweden, how it never really feels. Well, there's a couple times where it actually does go to what might be considered the one. Uh, but technically, I think it's written in Dorian mode. But anyway, point is, it always feels like it's moving and grooving. Okay, this next one is called Cast Aways. So the two notes we've had so far implied are C and now an E flat in the bass. Now something else is happening. So we heard right at the end of the last note before this piano part, we heard a little bit of pitch modulation. And now here the pitch modulation is a little place and we hear these little moments. There's like backward sounds being played behind it. It was a little All that's being played in reverse. And the way this piano sounds, it's like haunting, it's sad, and the way it's wobbling is like supposed to uh, imitate something like it being on like a really old record player. So imagine if like the world 
fell to pieces, which I mean, I've seen just some images uh, like for the soundtrack. It looks like the world fell to pieces in this game. And uh, I could be wrong on that, but that that's what it looks like from like the uh, the game design and things like that. I also looked at my own thumbnail, so a little bit of context there. Anywho, um, think about it. If the world were to end, like we wouldn't have Spotify, we wouldn't have YouTube, but you know, you might be able to crank a little electric generator and get a get a uh, record player to work. Who knows? All right, this next one is called the Sun Station. Not entirely accurate. Well, there you go. sounds we were hanging out sort of in uh, E flat again Oh, beautiful. Oh, come on. Okay, so without getting too technical, all right, there's these moments where it go, you hear it goes, like you hear the sound change, like you hear those moments. Listen, there's different things composers do to make that happen, uh, both electronically and also physically on um, analog uh, synthesizers. You can also do it post with different uh, filters and things. But look, the point that I want to make is that when you hear stuff like that, let's say in EDM, it happens faster, it happens uh, more often and that's how like you feel the beat drop right it's like with transitions like that uh, and again not getting very technical here what's interesting is when you have a slower song like this and you have those moments where you have those transitions of sound it makes a very significant impact because everything's sort of been the same you've had the same texture it's like you've been eating a salad or it's like here here's a really good example it's like you ordered a piece of pizza and on the piece of pizza and on when you order the pizza you said listen i don't want any mushrooms and then when you have that it's like there's a mushroom hidden under the cheese of the pizza and right when you bite into you're like oh whoa there's a mushroom here and it like tastes so good that's what that's like it's like an unexpected thing that you wouldn't totally anticipate but when it happens it's it's a it's a revelation and it creates it like pays off that the song had been like that sort of backwards, sort of smooth, sort of one gear type of a thing. And then when it shifts gears like that, huge payoff. All right, let's check out the next one.
Alright, now we're back to the F sharp ED thing. Here it is. Yep. We're back to Outer Wilds. Okay, so a really interesting callback to track two, which was Outer Wild. Now, it's a callback, and we know it's a callback, number one, because the, the uh, banjo was playing the same notes. And then number two, we actually were in the same key. And number three, the bass was doing the same exact D, 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 E, 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 E. Again, I'm not playing exact bass line, but F sharp, back to E. It was doing that whole thing. Really cool. All right, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Oh, that was the main title. Well, it makes sense that the main title in Outer Wilds, which is also the title, would sound the same. <laughs> there you go. So right now, it's like we're in C minor. But C minor is the relative minor of E flat major. Okay, so that was really interesting for a number of reasons. That was like a compilation of the sort of three gears we've heard so far. The three gears we've heard so far are atmospheric, uh, coming in, like doing almost these like sort of pop type things uh, where you have this repeated melody over bass line. And then the third, uh, which is the uh, reverse. And so we heard all three. We heard a little bit of atmospheric, we heard a little bit of reverse, and we heard a little bit of the instruments going on as well. Something interesting to note as well, you'll notice sometimes that I'm not immediately grabbing which chord it is, or I'm actually moving my hands around a little bit, and that's because one of the interesting things the composer is doing, that's Andrew Prahlo, go check him out, P-R-A-H-L-O-W, is the root note of the chord is not always, uh, the lowest note in the chord is not always the letter name of the chords. For example, we had in there an E flat, over G, not just an E flat, 
So an E flat major chord, which typically has an E flat, a G, and a B flat. But instead of having E flat be the lowest note, actually G be the lowest note, which creates a much different feeling. You guys feel that? It's totally different from like, well, let's see. Here, that's like, it's on its way somewhere, whereas this one, it's like it's good where it is. But this one, it wants to go somewhere. It's on a journey somewhere. I think the next one is called the uncertainty principle. By the way, I'll read out all these super chats after the stream. So, we're actually hearing similar... With note rearranged? Well, Bex Lizard, I will answer your question after this piece of music. So chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Heisenberg uncertainty principle have something to do with string theory? Because like, something's here, but it's also on the other side of the universe at the same time? Or am I getting my uh, things confused there? People say, yeah, pretty much, and also not really. <laughs> Rough definition, yeah. Puffle chops! In the house. <laughs> Alright, it's, it's not the string theory, but quantum physics. Got it. You came here for the music, and you watched me just get it wrong on quantum mechanics. That's okay. All right, so this was interesting. I think this is more of a piece of music where clearly something is happening. Not that obviously it's a video game soundtracks. So obviously things are happening during all of them. But I think that in this moment, there's other things that require most likely the player's attention. So this one is not very much in your face. Perhaps it's also an uncertainty principle, and it's trying to encapsulate that and show that, well, nothing is really certain. Things are here. They're also not here as well. Yes, indeed. Much more complicated, but I got the spirit of it, Nathan. <laughs> indeed. Okay, so now to talk about something that I actually know about, uh, and that was a question from Bex Lizard. Bex Lizard was asking, okay, when, 
notes inside of a chord are in different orders. Like, what is that? Okay, so let's understand what a chord is first and also what notes are. So notes are letters like A, B, C, D, F, G that we give to certain pitches. Now, pitches are frequencies. So like, who? that's pitch. Everyone right now, if you're by yourself or like not out in public, or even if you are in public, just go, who? <laughs> right, okay, so you just made a pitch. You just made a sound. Now, some pitches have note names, and those note names would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we have this, that, and the other. Uh, so some things like sharps and flats, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So whenever we, <laughs> ah, <laughs> indeed. So, uh, woo, I, yo. okay, so we have these pitches we're making. Now, some pitches, not all pitches, but some pitches have letter names associated with them. And these pitches are called notes. Now, when we play a bunch of these notes together at the same time, we have, so that's one note, that's two notes. We play them together at the same time, we get a chord. Chord 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 is multiple notes all together at the same time now Bex Lizard was asking okay what happens when we change around the order of those notes well there's two things that happens when we change around the order of the notes the first is called voicing voicing is quite simply you keep the same note as the lowest note but you change the order of the notes on top of it so for example we're going to play a c major chord okay so the lowest note's going to be c the next note for now is going to be e the next note is going to be g this creates a c major triad now i'm also going to play the c on top of that and the e here so we have c e g c e that's a chord, right? So the voicing of this chord is the fact that it is spelled. We use the word spelled to describe the order. So we go C, E, G, C, E. Now what happens is I can keep this C note as the lowest and I can change the voicing. That You have the difference? Listen, here's, here's option one. Here's option two. You can hear the difference? Option one, option two. So in option two, instead of going C, E, G, C, E, we're going C, G, C, E, G. So we're actually changing the order of the notes. We're still just using C's, E's, and G's, but we're doing them in a different order, and C is still the lowest note. Now, the second thing that can happen is called an inversion. And what an inversion is, is when we take one of the other notes from the chord, so we take a C or an E, and we make that the lowest note. So instead of having C be the lowest note, the lowest note's gonna be E. There you go. We can make G the lowest note. So, that's the difference between voicing and inversion, and those are the two things that happen when we change the order of the notes in the chord. All right, let's keep the thing rocking and rolling with, uh-oh, end times. Indeed, and oftentimes inversion chords are written as slash chords. So interestingly enough, we just had an example in C major, and sure enough.
Yeah, THX, exactly. It also reminds me of that moment uh, of liftoff in Space Oddity by David Bowie, his breakout single, uh, which also had to do about space. But yeah, brought to you by THX. You bet that was absolutely wild and not at all what I was expecting uh, at the end. Interestingly enough, I think that's the first time that we've heard a piece of music in this soundtrack be in the key of C major or A minor, depending on how you want to tackle the analysis on that. Um, let's keep it rocking and rolling with 22 minutes to Mars. So we're hearing a real shift in the soundtrack now. This is called the Nomai. I was getting so excited because I thought it was going to be in C minor, and then it turns out we were hitting some C major chords. We could have that sort of record player thing. Okay, that was a really interesting piece 
of sonic art, also known as music. Um, yeah. Okay. So interesting to hear we had elements of the reverse thing going on in there. We had uh, those atmospheric elements going on, but also that's the first time we've heard like a voice being implied in this entire soundtrack so far. We heard those sort of uh, voice, um, it sounded like a voice synth being used in there. That's the first time we've heard a voice, and I think that's interesting to note. I wonder if that has anything to do with the game. Uh, the fact that that's the first time we hear a voice. The next one is called The Ash Twin Project. So, chat's talking a lot about the percussion. And I think what's interesting is that you have the percussion holding this very steady pulse feeling. But over that feeling that the percussion's holding, those reverse pianos are kind of moving in and out of where the time is. Drums are starting to build now. Reminds me of the new season of Stranger Things. Yeah, okay, yeah, we do have elements of that, those reversed sounds. But this one is different. These drums are moving and pushing this thing along in a way that's different from what we heard before. Now building with strings. So here's another interesting thing that I want to point out about this song and a couple of the other songs. Whenever we look at pieces of music, a lot of the time there's going to be sort of a contour of the energy or of delivery of a song. So let's take like um, let's take a song like uh, I don't know, uh, "Hot and Cold" by Katy Perry. So it's like intro, 
And then we have verse. You change your mind, the girl changes the you. Up, we up the energy because we're hot and you're cold. And then we go, go back to the verse. We're back down. All right. And then we go to the chorus again. And then it's like someone called a doctor, got a case of love bipolar. And right there, the energy's going up. So we can see that the energy is like building to this high point. Can't get off this ride. <laughs> iPad down. And then we go, you change your mind like a girl changes clothes, right? And then it's back down to the course. And so, look, basically, we have this contour of it goes up, it builds to a point, and then it comes back down. Now, what we can see a lot in these pieces of music is that uh, it, it starts off, it goes up to about halfway, and then it's sort of like it reaches, it's sort of uh, the, the high point, the climax of it about halfway through, and then it just kind of like stays there. And we've seen that a couple of times. We heard it in the first song when that electric guitar comes in. We heard that here in the moment where the drums started to build up uh, again. And um, yeah, clearly my iPad would prefer to jump off of my desk than hear me try to very quickly and poorly sing Katy Perry. So uh, it decided its fate. I made my choice. It made its choice. And now, uh, now we shall carry on. Oh no, I can actually sing. I wasn't actually trying to sing there. <laughs> I was trying to get through the song. like scratching sounds. Oh, very creepy. Oh, bass coming now uh, right here. Crispy says the scratching is from the fish. We shall not talk about the fish. We shall not dish about the fish. The fish are forbidden. <laughs> ah. 
Charlotte just said, can I ban Dan for spoilers? Please don't. I, I am enjoying this. Okay. So again, an interesting piece of atmosphere here with moments where we could like hear a bass note here and there. And I think what's interesting is to look at these just from a musical perspective and say, okay, yeah, sure, there was a lot of sort of, well, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. sound happening but where were the little inflection points where were the moments where the composer was like okay i'm gonna add something in here i'm gonna add something in here and that's really what makes it well at least for me interesting is to see those moments where the composer was like here's a bass note here's just a little thing that's gonna just go by um so yeah that's what makes that interesting for me the next one is called giants deep Oh, Bando's back. Silent night. Ah, and here we have bass notes changing. Bass notes changing underneath the melody that's saying the same. That melody sounds like a British pop song. Sounds like uh, something from Wham. All right, this next thing is called... All right, so look. Let's get clear on what just happened there. What happened there is we had this line. Or whatever it was. So look, we had that, and the bass was changing underneath it. Now, this is something we heard all the way back at the beginning of this a couple of times come through. So we had the banjo holding a melody and the bass changing underneath it. This next one is called No My Ruins. So listen, because we have this atmosphere holding like a canvas that the piano is now painting on. Oh, Julian, you have no idea, buddy. Eh? 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 Look at that. Custom water bottle.
So now we have the opposite. Instead of the melody staying the same and the bass changing, the bass is staying the same and the chords and the melody are changing on top of it. It's fading out now. It's fading out. That was almost like hanging out in the key of like G or E natural minor. Well, not the key of E natural minor, the key of E minor. there to see over G. <sighs> it's not over. Okay, that was a very, very interesting piece of music for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think this is the longest piece we've had so far in the soundtrack. Also then, the way the chords are being structured, sometimes it's left... I mean, yeah, sure, I think we could honestly say that that was in E minor, but the way the chords are being used is kind of like G major -y. Very interesting. This next one is called Final Voyage. Final Voyage. Oh yeah, come on.
Oh, yeah, little... Oh, that's so cool. Before we head into the next one, quick shout out. Thank you to everyone watching this. There's a pinned chat in the chat that I pinned right at the top. It's 10 things I think every gamer should know about music theory. Go click on that. It's a free download. You can check it out. Then I send you another free download like tomorrow or the next day after you get it. It's really cool. It's free info for you for free. You can also save like 92% on my music theory book. So go ahead and check out that link. I don't have any uh, sponsors on this channel, and they have asked. And I've said no, because, well, if I'm going to take your guys' time to tell you about something, it means I think it's worth your time to hear about it. And I honestly think that that download and also my book, it's worth your time to hear about it. All right, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling with The Ancient Glade. Oh. That bass note change there was huge. Okay, so what was really interesting about this piece of music is like it was a marriage. It was a cross between, number one, we had the sort of atmospheric thing in there. Number two, we had what sounded to be like a sample or being played a live instrument sounded like something with steel strings being played. But then it was transformed. There was some distortion on it, maybe some uh, bit crusher, something going on uh, to create that real sort of gravelly, uh, crunchy sound. 
on that sort of main musical element, if you will. So we can see that even though things are changing, there's ideas that are coming back and there's techniques that are holding this whole thing together. And while very different uh, in nature between those uh, acoustic songs and these atmospheric and electronic and manipulated songs, not manipulated in a bad way, just artistically manipulated to sound different than they would by themselves, uh, assuming, of course, that that was an actual steel string instrument being played, uh, that there is this sort of continuity and these elements are starting to come in and perhaps we're starting to see everything really start to come together. This next one is called Travelers. Oh, no, Curiosity, excuse me. Then we have Travelers. Okay, here we go, Travelers. Let's do this thing. This one has a lot more listens than the other one, so let's check this out. Ah, we're back to banjo. Oh, it's doing the bass line. But a uh, whole step down. Whistles! Oh, that's amazing. Now more instruments coming in. Shout out to Network 50, he does the thumbnails for the channel. Now just washing it out in reverb. Bringing in the atmospheric. Still following that bass line. Chat says, let the next song play right afterwards. Type a one if you want to hear the next song right afterwards. No breakdown in between. All right, we're going to let it flow. Excuse me, we're gonna let the hate flow. Yeah? Use your anger, it gives you focus. Anyone? No? Okay.
Interesting. So here, up top, we have this. And here, the bass changes underneath it. It's actually the same chord progression Yeah, cello in there too Good ears, Julian Jello's got that main theme. <sighs> Beautiful.
Okay, so we actually still have a couple more songs. We got about six more. But before we go any further, I want to break down something that's been a constant thing throughout a lot of these songs. And that is that same chord progression of going like four, five, six, five. Like we heard it before, it was like uh So again, we have four, five, six, five. We heard it also in the key of G. We heard four, five, six, five. And then we also heard it in the key of, well, what technically would be A, four, five, six, five. So we've actually heard that same exact chord progression in three different keys, which is super cool. By the way, hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I am going to do the DLC in a couple of days. All right, let's do this next thing, a rocking and a rolling with morning. Oh, that was really pretty. That was really short, but it was really, I thought there was going to be more. All right, that was beautiful. Uh, that was definitely live cello. You could hear because it was actually a little bit out of tune at times. Uh, so typically when they make samples, they make sure it will be in tune. Sometimes we hear the little bit of intonation uh, imperfections. You know it's uh, being played live, which actually brings up an interesting point. You know, some people get very uh, snooty. Well, snooty, uh, uh, elitist, uh, I don't know. But look, Here's the thing. Would you, yeah, here's the question. All right, maybe one time you do this, but would you do this all the time? Would you go out to a concert where a computer presented the best performance of a piece of music you've ever seen? Now, when I say best, I mean it's the most technically perfect. Like, would you go out to see that? I'd go to see it one time. I don't know if I'd go to see it two times. So I think it brings up a really interesting conversation around the imperfections in music and how it's almost like not worth doing anything unless we all know that we're human and we're going to have some mistakes every once in a while and that almost makes things better because then we can see when someone is like we can see that someone's trying and we all know we're all human beings and we all know how hard it is to try to do something and we all know how hard it is to be disciplined to do something and keep on going back to it over and over again. And I feel like when we hear human beings do something where it's clear they've had the discipline and they go back and they try really hard, like it's really cool because we know how hard, like we know, like that is really a difficult thing to do. Anyway, um, campfire song. Oh, this is pretty. Sure, Voldy, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, theremin's hard to do, man. We are about halfway through. And we get that build, that change. So this is something the composer's done a couple times.
Well, that was a lot of fun. This next one is called Into the Wilds. Look, listen to that guitar, it's a little out of tune. Like, it's great. Ah, there's our theme. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Okay, let's break down a little bit of the music theory that was used in that song to make it sound so cool. So that moment where I kind of like, uh, yes, I do. I've got a six string banjo back there. Um, so it's not really banjo. It's like I can play it like a guitar and it just sounds like a banjo. Okay, so one of the really cool things that happened there. So basically we were like in C. Let's just get our ears used to being here. Oh. oh! So, you want a flat six. So it's we're like we're in C. We're just hanging out in C. Right there. You hit that A flat. Boom. That's some powerful stuff, man. So basically you go on the flat six, so whatever key you're in, you count up six. So C, D, E, F, G, A. And then bring it down a half step from where it would normally be for that major scale. So for example, if you're in the key of G, your flat six would be E flat. Yeah, really cool. Right, this next one is called Addo of Time. Very dramatic. So that was cool because we heard a little bit of the electronic stuff, we heard a little bit of the banjo stuff, and we heard a little bit of the atmospheric stuff all together. This next one is called We Have Lift Off. That's our main theme.
Wow. That was really cool. Because, you know, we heard a couple times where there was like this distortion thing happening, this electronic treatment of possibly an acoustic sound. Well, sure enough, there we heard that same banjo playing the same things we've heard it playing well through the whole soundtrack, not in every song, but, you know, we've heard that same theme played by the banjo. But to hear it there just absolutely cranked up to 10 was really cool. This next one is called A Terrible Fate. That hits the theme. Ha. Oh, gosh, this is hilarious. And I think it's a kazoo, too. All right, guys, we're going to listen to one more track. Sent over by Razman. Thank you, Razman. It's Outer Wilds Reprise. Now, before we get into Outer Wilds Reprise, uh, everybody, uh, if you could please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and there is a link in the chat that I've put up there for all of you. It's 10 things I think every gamer should know about music theory. Go check it out you will not regret it it's a free download and you get a second free download like tomorrow i think or the next day it's really cool and you get to save 92 percent on my book i do not have any sponsors because i've not found a sponsor that i feel you guys should hear from to take up your valuable time and your attention however i'm telling you that this list and also my book is worth your time and your attention you will actually learn stuff Okay, without any further ado, let's check out Outer Wilds Reprise. Type a two in the chat if for any reason you cannot hear the music starting now. So Razman says, this is a heads up, that this came out as a single a year after the release of the base game. Otter game of Risk of Rain, got it Otter. sounds there almost sounds like on sometimes on uh, digital pianos you can actually crank up the sound of the keys in the piano that was what it sounds like in there beautiful
There it is, our theme. Oh, I'm waiting for it. There's our reversed sounds. That's a really delicious sound on that guitar. It's like a really fast tremolo. We have cello again with some reverse sounds. Maybe that's just the delay. Wow, that was really cool. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check out the link in the chat for the 10 things I think every gamer should know about music theory. It is worth your time. There is real content there, real value for you for free. Go check it out. Um, check out my -pa 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 final reaction summary. Okay, a really interesting soundtrack. We have not heard anything like this before on this channel. A uh, really cool use of the acoustic instruments, the blending of the electronic elements, the treatment of the acoustic instruments with the electronic plugins or possibly um, mm, analog, uh, analog like pedals and things like that. That's always possible too. Uh, and then the sort of atmospheric things. I loved, loved, loved having the melody go on over the whole thing. And as I called it out, in, I think song number two, Quite a few times we had these moments where we'd we would have this uh, this mm, this theme or a, a melodic component or just a, a musical element that would be repeated over and over again, like a little melody, and underneath it the bass would change. And sure enough, we saw not only that happen, but we saw it happen uh, in uh, the same way uh, in three different keys. Uh, throughout this uh, soundtrack. So this was really, really cool. I loved listening to it. It was absolutely beautiful. Chat, thanks so much for being so awesome. Thank you to our Super Chatters for your support. I will read all those in a moment. And just one last shout out. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check out the link in the chat. 10 things I think every gamer should know about music theory. I'm plugging it because I think you're going to get something out of it. Not because I'm desperate for you to download it. I honestly think it's going to be helpful for you. Okay. Let's read some super chats. Thank you all so much for coming. You are all more than welcome to hang as we do this. Okay. Let's do this thing. So I just do have to run into my uh, community tab here because the first ones, YouTube has this really awesome feature called viewer activity that you click on and you can actually see all the Super Chats. But here's the thing, if you don't click it at the beginning of the stream, you don't see all the Super Chats from the beginning of the stream. So uh, I've just got to go run in and grab those from the beginning. 
and then we'll be rock and rolling because I did forget to hit that button at the start. So let's go check it out. All right, here we go. Let's see, Outer Wilds. King Peggy says, starting off the stream right with an upvote for Chrono Triggs. You got it, King Peggy. We're man, 2 or 2 upvoting Mother th mother 1 again, though since Mother 3 already in top 5, this is mostly to support you. Thank you, Rubberman202. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you'll react to Mother 1 OST first. Uh, Pikachu says, Outer Wilds fan finally get their spotlight. Yes, this has been a very requested soundtrack. Uh, this is a split between Persona 3 and Chrono Trigger. You got it, Pikachu. Dude's Neck. Ah, uh, yes, now we can go back to the main thing here. Okay. Dude's Neck. So let's put this towards Chicory, a colorful tail OST. You got it, Dude's Neck. Let's see. Ah, I don't think YouTube's dropping the ball. I think they do such an amazing job of inventing new features. And I think it's like, you know, I built my own website. Uh, I didn't build it, but, uh, you know, I've, like, hired people to build it. And, like, there's so many edge cases and, like, you think of everything. And then there's always things you don't think of that people find that could be improved. And then it's improved along the way. So I don't, I don't at all think they're dropping the ball. I think it's just, like one area to improve on and they've improved on so much and come so far anywho uh alessandra Quello says uh let's go outer wilds putting half towards devil may cry five of that's towards metal gear you got it ac louis says i love the fireplace vibe this gives yes it does doesn't it trilight i got it thank you so much uh i love fireplace vibes uh this gives i'm really into this here to give my request again for Hades OST. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Louie. Thank you for your support. And thank you all so much for your... Uh, thank you for your super chats and for supporting this channel with your super chats. Uh, Fried Tomato says, Finally, Outer Wilds. Indeed, finally. This one's going toward Risk of Rain 1 and 2. You got it, Fried Tomatoes. Bex Lizard says, Happy Saturday, y'all. Wake up, Chrono. Uh, Lean's Bell makes such beautiful music. Chrono Trigger, please. You got it, Bex Lizard. Weirdness Unfolds says one final push towards Ace Combat 7. Or should I say take off with what I believe is a smiley face? I can't really tell. I'm getting old, and I think I'm, I'm losing my touch with the smiley faces here. Loving your stream as always. See, back in my day, it was just semicolon and then open parentheses. Eh, who knows? Okay, Trilighting says, hey, finally back. Welcome back, Trilighting. I just put this word Xenoblade. I want it to be in voting soon since Xenoblade 3 releases next month. Ooh. It would be all over your reaction to the OST. That's a great one, Trial Lighting. Thanks for the heads up there. King Peggy says, Chrono Legion, I need you. Okay, Joe Bro says, I'd like to request all of Patapon 1 3. Because each OST is short, these games are strategy, rhythm, and we're part of my childhood growing up, so one day you're able to cover them. Well, thank you, Joe Bro. We're certainly going to upvote those and add them to the list with your super chat. Uh, Rick Stink says, Please listen to the Detroit Become Human OST. I promise you will have no regrets. Well, Rick Stink, we will add it if it's not already there. And we will, uh, we will rock it and... Roll it. Now, Buzz Lamouche says... Machinarium. Okay. Buzz. I got on. I'm going to need a second. Right. Buzz. Machinarium. Okay. Puffle Chops. <laughs> Literally my favorite handle ever. Puffle Chops. <laughs> Puffle Chops. so amazing. Puffle Chops. Says, uh, I want to bump up Friday Night Funkin's OST, not because it's my favorite, it's just good in my opinion, but because I'm curious what you'll say about it. You got it, Puffle Chops. Weirdness Unfolds, welcome for being a Sonic supported member for two months. Golden Pig 64 says, got my paycheck last night, so putting some of that into Mad Rat Dead suggestion like usually got it, Golden Pig 64. Thank you for your support. Argus says, Dan, been looking forward to Outer Wilds forever. I love to see you listen to an OST that you know. This goes to your favorite Zelda. My guess, Link to the Past. Yes, Argus. Well guessed. 
nothing nothing can replace the games you play when you're a kid you know it's like you, you like someone could make the best fit objectively the best video game ever invented i don't think you'd ever like it as much as the video games you played when you were a kid there's just it just holds a special place in your heart the manini boy says yo dan love your content well thank you for the love manini boy manini boy goes on to say been here since the Undertale Orchestra action. Whoa! That was a minute ago, huh? Uh, thanks for hanging out. Nice to see the progression of your channel. Indeed, we are growing and changing and evolving and getting better all the time thanks to incredible community input and voting. Also put this towards Xenoblade DE. You got it, Manini boy. Mr. Bojangles says, gotta put Xenoblade Chronicles back in contention. You got it, Mr. Bojangles. Big Gamer 2525 says, can't wait to recover. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll read that again. Big Gamer 2525 says, I can't wait for you to cover SimCity 3000. It's so good. Just pure jazz injected straight into my. Well, that sounds like fun. Minions fan upvoted Luigi's Manor. Thank you, Minions fan, for your super chat and for your support. Put in Hun, shout out for three months at Kazoo Club. Shelby Shock says, would love to stay, but I must go about my day getting errands done. Have a good rest of the stream, Dan. I'm going to give off a little boost here. You got it, Shelby Shock. Otter Gamer says, it's time for another Risk of Rain donation. Might do a little more in a moment. With a, no, I'm not too old for that one. With a uh, fun face with a tongue out. Uh, what I'm hearing is fantastic, and I have never wanted the game more. Yeah, that that OST was a lot of fun. Puddin Hunt Eleven says, "Hey, yo, Dan, gotta say how much I've enjoyed your reaction to the games Atlas makes. I will upvote Persona Three, definitely one of my favorite in this series. It speaks heavily on dealing with death." Well, thank you, Puddin Hunt. Otter Game says, "Ooh, it's ending already. Looks like my second donation has got to go right now, and that's for Risk of Rain." Virtual Pain 17 says, I've been really enjoying these videos, my man. We move near replicant up the list. You got it, Virtual Pain. Weirdness Unfolds says, another boost for Ace Combat 7. To skies, un to skies unknown. Crazy Pixel says, I uh, just want to show support for such an underrated YouTuber. Well, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. It's always good being underrated because then people really aren't mean to you. It's like once you get success, then, uh, then uh, it becomes a problem. But also, uh, could the, I mean, success is also very relative. I honestly feel very successful um, because it's all relative. It's all in your mind. Like, you know, you could go your whole life not feeling successful because you never set a goal and you never define what success is going to be in your own mind. And then you're never happy. But if you define success in your own mind and you figure out for yourself what success is and then you get there, then it's like, oh, OK, this is a moment like this is cool. This is success. And then if you want to, you set a new goal. But I think having having a moment and a place to find in your mind of what success is and then working towards that is important. And having it be a reasonable goal that you know you can achieve is good too. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, just wanted to show support. Sorry, Crazy Pixel. So I just wanted to show support for such an underrated YouTuber. But also could you have Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 soundtracks be moved up the list? You got it, Crazy Pixel. Okay. Yeah, see, it's like little moments, right? It's like Vinny talked about the channel. Like, that was really cool. He talked about a funny moment, too. Like, where um, Oematsu was, like, doing some chord progressions that I could not predict what was going to happen next. And it was, like, completely blowing my mind. Okay, Jammy. Hey, Jammy. Jammy says, let me add this to Furry. It was composed by like six different artists making two songs per boss. Ooh, the themes give you a good sense of their personalities. That's fun. Pikachu says, great stream today, Dan. If you're interested in playing the Outer Wilds, I definitely recommend it. Add this to Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah, I'm totally open to it. Uh, let me just finish my DLC for The, for the Witcher and uh, we'll rock it and roll it. Okay, Buzz Lamouche says Machinarium. You got it, Buzz Lamouche. And Otter Gamer says one last donation. Ask any updates on the Discord server. Risk of rain once again. L O L. Yes, 
working on that Discord server. So actually, I launched, I'm launching my course on July 1st. Uh, look out in the community tab for some early bird specials on that later today. But I was going to have a Discord server be part of the course, but like people didn't want to like, you know, do the extra thing to get it. So uh, well, I'm going to work on that. I think we'll probably just do like a free one or something like that. Um, so yeah, type two in the chat if you want a, a free Discord server, if you think, if you think that would be fun. That's all I've got to say. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and there's the 10 things I think every gamer should know about music theory. Seriously, if you've not go clicked on that, like go click on it. It's a free download. I honestly think you're going to get a lot out of it. And uh, we'll rock and roll like that. Hope you all have an awesome, sawsome Luigi's Mansion. Not manor, indeed. <laughs> Man, uh, it's, it's my handwriting. I wrote down mansion, but my handwriting is so bad I just said manor. <laughs> Okay. Y'all have a fantastic one. I will see you in the next stream. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for supporting me in this channel with your super chats. And thank you for watching because I could not do this without you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on demand, thank you so much for commenting. If you're commenting, thank you so much for liking. If you're liking, thank you for subscribing. If you're subscribing, thank you for chatting. For those who are chatting in this moment. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. I will see you all next time. Take care.